I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a very important question. We are just analyzing one function to review everything which you have learned in calculus derivatives and that's the function. In part 1 we discussed the basic characteristics while well, here is the sheet which we talked about and we found the domain range and behavior x y intercepts and then we figured out that it could look like this. So that was an estimated sketch uh, which we got from part 1 and it seems to be a very very good uh, accurate assumption right and in then part 2 we learned about the first derivative of this particular function and we found the first derivative uh, which is right written here x plus 1 divided by x to the power of 2 over 3 times x plus 3 to the power of 1 over 3. We also found that it has a local maximum at minus 3, a local minimum at minus 1 and the value was cube root of 4 with a negative sign for the minimum, 0 for maximum, correct? Intervals Intervals, intervals for increasing and decreasing were also found and there they are, right? So there they are. So now we'll begin with the second derivative. So I'll just copy the result of first derivative and then that will be our starting point. So what we found in part two was that the first derivative of this function is equal to x plus one divided by x to the power of two over three times x plus 3 to the power of 1 over 3. So that is the derivative and when we began in part 1 we kind of analyzed just from the characteristics and behavior of functions which we have learned much 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 earlier that the graph could be drawn in this form right so it could be drawn kind of like this. I'm just copying this graph from the previous video. So this is what we did and we found in previous video analyzing this first derivative. This, this is minus cube root of 4. This is minus 3 that is that is 0 right. So this is what we have till now right. So now we need, need to analyze the second derivative to find two things. Uh, basically point of inflection. This is what we're trying to find. So this graph could, that will decide the behavior here, right? Or how does it turn, right? Maybe at the origin, who knows? So somewhere the graph has to move kind of, concavity may change, for example, like this and this. So concave up to concave down. So that is to say, we need to analyze concavity, right? So this is the main objective of part three. In part 4, we'll club all the things together and finally sketch our graph. Okay. Now let's find derivative of this particular function. As you can see, it's quite a difficult function to find derivative and more difficult to simplify and solve. So you could always use the quotient rule, but what I will do here is use the logarithm uh, which we learned. Some of you must have learned, some might not have. So you can continue with the quotient rule, simplify the expression, and then uh, check with my final result. What I will do here is I'll take log both sides, right? So if I take log both sides, I can write this as ln f dash x, right? So this is, I'm taking log on the left side, and similarly ln log of, you should use log log, log or ln. This is to the base e, natural log, right? You could use any, it doesn't really matter. Both will give you same result, right? So x, mm, I have to write 2 over 3, 2 over 3 times x plus 3 to the power of 1 over 3. Is that okay? So that is what it is. Now, I hope you remember these rules, uh, logarithmic rules. When you have multiplication and division, anything in the quotient comes with negative, these are added, right? So you could do this as ln x plus 1, and this will be minus ln x to the power of 2 over 3 minus ln x plus 3 to the power of 1 over 3, right? So, so that is how you could do. And then we can apply the power rule to this. So let me do that. I'm doing it in stages. So the power rule can be applied and it could be written as ln x plus 1 minus 2 over 3 ln x 
minus 1 over 3 ln x plus 3. Is that okay? So natural law, this is the expression. Here we have ln of f dash x. Perfect. So that is what we have. Now we'll take derivative on both sides, right? So now we'll differentiate with respect to x. So when you differentiate this function with respect to x, what do you get? So we get 1 over this function, which is which is 1 over f dash x times derivative of this function, so times second derivative. Do you see that? So that is how you will get the left side. On the right side, you get 1 over x plus 1. Here you get minus. This is 2 over 3. And let me write here. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x minus this is 1 over 3. Derivative of this is 1 over x plus 3. So the derivative is very simple when you're working with logarithmic functions, right? So that's the whole idea. So now we can take a common denominator, right? So common denominator here is uh, we can take the number 3. We can take x and we can take the x plus 1 and then we have x plus 3. Now, that 1 gets multiplied by 3x times x plus 3 minus 2 times uh, x plus 1 and x plus 3 minus. Uh, this will get multiplied by x and x plus 1, correct? Okay, so now let us simplify this. So the denominator is all this, which is 3x, x plus 1, x plus 3, and here we get 3x squared plus 9 minus. So when you do this x squared, you get 2x squared. 2 times 1 times 3 is 6 minus 6, and then x, 3, and x, 4x, 4 times 2 minus 8. Here we get minus x squared minus x, right? Now we can actually uh, write this in much simpler form. So we have 3x times x plus 1 times x plus 3. Now on this side we have 1 over f dash x. Remember that part, okay? Let me push this uh, slightly in front. So we have 3x squared. Let's take care of minus 2x squared is x squared minus x squared is 0. So we've taken care of that. Uh, let's take care of uh, x terms. Uh, this was 9, 9x, right? So 9x minus 8x is x, x minus x is 0, so x terms are vanished. Constants, we have minus 6 here, so we have left with minus 6. Now what we have here is the second derivative divided by the first derivative. So now we can take the first derivative on this side. Is that okay? So I'm just saving on the space. So, so that helps to find the second derivative. Do you see that? How easily we could simplify this complex part. Now we'll write on the derivative itself and get our second derivative, correct? So, so what we have here now is, so second derivative is equal to all this, which is minus six over, I could cancel this also, we'll do it later, okay x plus 1 times x plus 3 times the derivative which is x plus 1 I mean over x to the power of 2 over 3 times x plus 3 to the power of 1 over 3 correct so you can simplify this now x plus 1 cancels this goes with 2 and well we can combine these terms to write down the final answer for second derivative. So we have minus 2 on the top and in the denominator we have uh, x to the power of 1 plus 2 over 3 that is uh, 5 over 3. So x to the power of 5 over 3 and then we have x plus 3 to the power of uh, 1 plus 1 over 3 which is 4 over 3 right so 4 over 3. So that is the second derivative. Now to analyze the second derivative we know it is not defined at two points, right? Which are at x equals to 0 and x equals to minus 3. Is that okay? So what we notice here is that the critical number is 
when x equals to 0 and x is equals to minus 3, right? These are the critical numbers. So we'll analyze these critical numbers now. Perfect. Okay. So let's write down what we have. We have these factors. So we have minus 2 as one of the factors. We have x to the power of uh, 5 over 3 as one of the factors. And we have x plus 3 to the power of 4 over 3, right? Now, we are analyzing these points which are minus 3 and 0. So let's take a test point in these intervals, minus 4, minus 1, and 1 could be good test points. As far as minus 2 is concerned, you know, minus 2 will always be negative, right? So, so we could write this as, as negative, 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 x to the power of 5 over 3. If x is negative, x to the power of 5 over 3 is negative. So these two are negative, that is positive. Here, the power is 4 over 3. It should be positive always, right? So that is it. So once we do that, what do we get? Let us see. Two negatives means a positive. Two negatives means a positive. One negative means a negative. And as far as concavity is concerned, a positive means concave up. Positive means concave up. Negative means concave down. Perfect. Now, if the concavity changes, what do we have? We have point of inflection. So we have point of inflection at zero. You can see that, right? So that is the point of inflection. So that is what we get from this particular video. So the point of inflection is at zero. And the graph is concave up, concave up, and concave down. Perfect. So now we can summarize that in first part, we learned about the characteristics, end behavior, zeros, x-intercepts, whether the graph is negative or positive, that was enough to get this kind of a result. This function is continuous, domain is all real numbers, and this was expected to have some cusp, which we thought it should be at minus 3, so we reasoned it out. We found the first derivative and then that confirmed that at minus 1, we do have a minimum. The value is minus cube root of 4, cube root of 4, and the maximum is at minus 3, the value is 0, right? And from the second derivative, we found the concavity changes at x equals to 0, so we have a point of inflection. So basically, the graph is concave up here and thereafter is concave down as we had drawn. So that is how you could actually sketch the graph of the function. So with this, I think I can close this series. I don't have to move to part four. So I hope that works for you, right? So that is how we can actually uh, sketch a graph like this, of a function like this. And I hope this takes you through all what you learn uh, in the first part of calculus while learning about derivatives and we kind of reviewed something which you learned about the functions earlier as a part of pre-calculus. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.